What's going on you guys? It is Corbin Stuckey at Pixel Talk and I'm here to give you my review of Unhinged. This was the first movie that I've seen in the movie theaters in a while since the pandemic started and closed down the movie theaters. So it, it was just so refreshing to be back in a movie theater. I don't know if you guys watch me on Snapchat or not, but like there are just times where I pass the movie theater and I'm like, oh, I miss it so. I actually forgot how cold it was to be in a movie theater. I walked in and was like, ooh, I need a jacket. It is cold, I forgot about this. I missed the popcorn, I missed the candy, like cookie dough bites and Sour Patch, I didn't miss the cold. So I'm just looking forward to going back to the movie theaters and just looking forward to what's coming out in the coming weeks. And this was the first film that I saw, Unhinged. Uh, it stars Russell Crowe, and it's basically about this guy who's having a really bad day. He's actually done something horrible and he's just driving in the city. And as he's having a bad day, this woman is driving her son to school He's pondering at a stoplight and she just wants him to like go. It's a green light. So she honks his horn at him. He's not going. So she just decides to drive by him. And this makes him really upset. He drives next to her and demands that uh, she apologize. This sounds like an actual scenario that could take place. Like a, like a, something that you would hear on a police report or something. <laughs> and she decides that she's not going to apologize because he was kind of in the wrong. Like it was a green light. And he decides because of this, he's going to follow this girl around the city and kill a bunch of people she knows. And that's pretty much the plot of this film is this woman honks at this guy because he's not going at a green light and he demands an apology from her. And she's like, no. And he's like, okay. I'm gonna torment you. <laughs> so I first saw this trailer, uh, I think it was like two or three months ago. And I was reading the comments on Facebook and people were like, really, that's the plot of this film. But I was like, you know what? I, yeah, let me see this. This sounds like silly. And I'd love to see how this goes. And actually seeing the film tonight, it's actually a lot more serious than I thought it was gonna be. Like if you tell someone the plot of this film, it's kind of silly. But if you watch the movie, it's portrayed in a manner where it's actually like more serious than the pitch itself intends it to be. I'm going to get positives out of the way real quick. Uh, the director is a guy named Derek Borte or Borte or whatever it's, I don't know. I looked at his IMDb and I don't really recognize a whole lot of the works that he's done. Uh, this is the first film that I think he's done that has like a major cast like Russell Crowe. Within the film itself, it's actually done pretty well. Uh, the car chase scenes are very well shot. There's actually some death scenes where people get hit by cars and other automobiles where it makes you jump in your seat. So I, I thought that was really eye-opening and very well done. Just the visual style and filmmaking behind that. I was like, oh my God, like these kills are like really violent. And Russell Crowe is actually doing a pretty good job here. He's very menacing. Uh, you would expect that from an actor like Russell Crowe. There are times where he's doing this accent where it sounds like he's like really Southern or it sounds like Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Sanders. And then there's other times where like, he sounds like he's just doing an American accent. It goes back and forth. So it's like, I, I know you're Russell Crowe and you're Australian, but like, I feel as though you need to pick an accent. Which American accent are you gonna do? It goes back and forth a lot of the time. So I, I noticed that. So you might notice that as well. However, like I said, the film is done in such a serious tone that I feel as though with a concept like this, like it, it, explaining it to someone, this is silly. Like this is like, <laughs> the, the film has to be self-aware. I, I feel as though the, the film could have been more self-aware than it initially was and maybe could have benefited from some humor. Unfortunately though, the, the film is very serious. The tone, it's trying to pitch this idea that this could be a thing that could happen to a woman in the city, which I'm not gonna deny. Road rage is a thing. There are crimes that are oriented because of road rage, but the film obviously has this agenda where it's trying to push this idea forth to its audience. There's even uh, footage that's showcased in the beginning of this film, uh, like a very montage intro scene where it's showcasing people getting mad on the road and people hitting people in stores that like America is like this angry society and the lower class gets angry and takes it out on other people. So there's ideas of that. It, it's just, it's very forced in my opinion. The film is just trying really hard to be serious and to present this idea like, oh, you know, this isn't a silly concept. This is pretty serious. This actually happens where I feel as though it could have benefited itself from being funny and self-aware. But the film decides to be more of a thriller, which in itself is very well executed. Uh, there's only a couple things that I have an issue with the film, and that's the main character, the mother. Um, I didn't give a shit about her. <laughs> like, the film really wants you to care about her. She's trying to drive her son to school, 
and trying to make sure that he doesn't get detention because he'll get tardied again. And then she's also going through like a divorce, but it's never explained at all why this divorce is taking place. And as the movie continues, I just start to realize that I just don't like this character. Uh, she's late for work. She doesn't set her alarm. She forgets that she has a client that day. And to top it all off, uh, there's a scene where they really need to use the iPad in her car and it turns off and the kid is like, do you have a charger? And she's like, no. And it's like, this is 2020. Like, when do you not have phone chargers? Like, mom, what are you doing? So there's just all this stuff stacking up where I'm like, this mom is so irresponsible. And there's a couple of things within like the plot itself where there are multiple different points where like, they need to go to the police. Like there's a point where she calls the police, but there's a lot of portions in the film where the guy's following her on the road and any given person would be like, oh, we need to go to a police station. And after the film's middle portion, she finally says to the son, okay, we need to go to the police station. And then they're on their way and they don't go to the police station and they decide to go to her mother's old house. It's just like, I thought this is what we were doing. This was the plan. And now you're doing this different plan that I'm not aware of. One thing I want to mention too, that I don't really talk about a whole lot is casting. There is a brother in the film that she has that is staying with them. Uh, this is her younger brother. He's kind of a deadbeat and he's taking advantage of the fact that this is her house and he's staying there. He's even got his girlfriend there. This character I first thought was like the little kid's brother and not his uncle, but the he looks like a teenager. He looks very, very young. And I'm like, really? That's your brother? That's supposed to be this kid's uncle? Like, I thought, like, it was his older brother. Like, I, I've never talked about casting at all, but it just threw me off. I just remember thinking, like, this doesn't really feel accurate to, like, what the character is supposed to be. It would have made sense if he was, like, 30 or something like that, but this looks like a kid in college. Like, he's in, what I'm saying is he's incredibly younger than this main character, this mother. Putting all those negatives aside, there is one good portion about this film where I just, I clapped and started laughing. Uh, there's a one-liner at the end of the film, and it's great. It, it just, it was the cherry on top for this film. Uh, you'll know it when you hear it. But I mean, overall, I think this film is going to benefit due to the fact that it's one of the first films that is out after this pandemic caused the movie theaters to close and now they're open back up. So I think like if you just wanted to go to the movies and you haven't seen a movie in a while, I think this film will do just fine for entertainment purposes. It's not a bad film at all. It's actually well done. There's just like a couple things regarding the film that I'm really nitpicking. I just wish the film was more self-aware of itself because this is a, you know, th this is a random motive for this character, Russell Crowe. And there's just, I don't know, I just didn't really like the main character all that well. Oh well, I mean, it was well done. I mean, I, I'd like to see where this director goes because like I said, the car chases and the deaths on the road is the major plus of this movie. It's very entertaining. So yeah, guys, that was my review to Unhinged. Comment down below what you thought of this movie if you've seen it yet. Like this video, share it, and please subscribe to Pixel Talk if you haven't yet for more movie reviews, trailer reactions, gaming content, and so on. Thank you guys so much. I am Corbin Stuckey, and this is Pixel Talk.